Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Well, no one's ready for long-term care, Leslie. And here, Leslie Curtis is in our studio going to tell us why aren't they ready for it and what are we going to do to get people ready for it, including us. I mean, who knows what lies ahead? Well, you know, I really think that um, just like anything, people don't want to know about things because they don't want to be in that position. Unfortunately, it happens all the time. You know, whether you're looking for long-term care for a parent, a loved one, um, how many couples get married? The man is in his 80s, the woman's in her 60s, and all of a sudden she realizes she needs help. Um, so there's all kind of different scenarios um, where people end up looking for long-term care. You know, an acute accident, injury, stroke. Um, and some people, can, you know, can go home, but they would require 24-hour care. It's got to be appropriate care. So there's all kinds of things to look at, but skilled nursing um, for long-term care is certainly a very good option um, because the caregivers that I see, you know, they come and visit their loved ones a lot, but they can go home and take a deep breath. When when the patient is at home, it is 24-7. So, you know, there's different reasons that we look for care in different um, places, you know, but it's it's not always the best to remain in the home for the patient and or the caregiver. That's yeah, really tough. I can relate to that in many ways. I remember visiting a lot of people, my own family members. Uh, it was, there's always been a discussion about this, but it's funny. The first thing is, I don't want to go to a nursing home. And of course they were called nursing homes then. And right. they're not the nursing home of today. It's a different way. Oh, it's a whole different yeah. ball game. There are so many, um, you know, different regulations and there's a lot of competition. So if, if you want, to be successful, you have to do good at what you do, like with any business. So um, we don't just take care of our long-term residents. We take care of our caregivers. Um, actually, tomorrow, we, it's called the Caregiver Connection. And tomorrow, we're honoring our caregivers. So we're going to have hors d'oeuvres and, you know, all kinds of uh, things. We've made up a little pamphlet for, them, you know, booklet. Um, and then once a month, we have... A meeting for them. We have you speakers. Have support groups. Yeah. I know you do. Yeah, yeah. It's very good. So people, and whether you have someone there at Regents Park or not, you, they certainly can come. Because right. we've been, we've been showing that in Boomer Times, uh, in, in our event program. And so make sure that, uh, that if you are going through anything like that and you, you know, and you're big timing, you think you can handle it, it's okay. Right. Just go because maybe then you can help others. Maybe they're going to help you. Maybe you're going to help others. But let me just tell you, Regents Park, they have something really cute. They do pet therapy dog training, which I think is pretty good. And then they have Odor, Overeaters Anonymous. Right. And then they, of course, also have, um, the Regents Park. Let's see. Well, what, what do we go, what do we, what do we call your support group? A caregiver I mean, support group? Caregivers. Yeah. I don't know if I even no, have that. In I there. don't have it. Gotta give it yeah, to you. Yeah. Gotta give it to you. Yeah. Caregiver support group. And I, I want to relate something. I remember when, Let's see. I had a very good friend uh, who took v- extraordinary care of her mother, but her mother always accused her, I guess, of um, stealing all her money. And she accused her of all the things that you as a you know nurse and you've been in this business for a long time know about that, that she was really beating her, that she was doing terrible things. And I right. know this person, I wasn't true. And she suffered a lot about this. And so I told her that there was a caregiver support group to attend and i don't remember it may have been one of the places you were before or something but after she attended it and, and i sat there with her yeah everyone had the same story right it's true and it's very very taxing on the caregivers so yeah we welcome anybody from the community to come um and we offer you know some really good speakers and ideas and even if just that they meet other people going through the same thing. You're right. That's the most important thing. And for those of you who don't know about Regents Park and how to get there, uh, it's really, it's in Boca Raton. It's very, very close to the Boca Raton Mall. Uh, and so if you want to call them, you can get instructions, and then you can make an appointment to either meet with Leslie or just 
get a tour or do something, just pop in. Don't be afraid. 561-483-9282. 561-483-9282. And uh, their website is regentsparkboca.com. Regentsparkboca.com. It's an extraordinary place. It's very beautiful. You would not know what they even do there, except you may see a wheelchair here and there. But it's um, the grounds are just as, lo- as though it's a hotel, yeah. and people are, always have smiles on their face. The food is extraordinary. It does shake you up to see w- what has happened today from when it may have been years ago. Because I remember I used to go to nursing homes years ago. Uh, I used to make speeches. And, um, and, and I, I kind of cringed when I saw some of the things happening and I said, well, look, they're getting care. What can you do? And it was hard on outsiders to see what yeah. went on there. And you know that as a nurse, I'm sure when you're a nurse and you're there, it's even harder, but they had a certain amount of money that they had to deal with. And at least these people were safe, most of them, from being alone in their home with nothing. Right. But now on a scale of one to 10, that may have been a one. And now we're talking about a 10. Right. Well, you know, I think, you know, one of the important things, obviously, you have nursing care 24-7. But what's really important is the socialization. You know, the activities that go on, live music, you know, live entertainment. That's really important because even, even those residents that are short on memory, long term memory is still there. So they enjoy the entertainment and the activities. We have cooking classes for them. Uh, I think it's every other week. I mean, there's a lot of things that we offer them to try and stir up the memories, and they enjoy it. They really do. You know, um, and it's it's a big focus in our facility. Pet, Like I said, you said pet therapy. We have music therapy. A lot of things that are so important as, you know, you have a day to fill. You know, and the meals are very important if you're a long term. Well, they are for short term, too. Um, But that only fills three hours a day, you know, so you have the rest of the time and the activities program is full. We have arts and crafts and all kinds of stuff for them. So it's really important. And that's the difference between, you know, staying at home where you might not have the opportunity to get that socialization in. That's really important. And I think it keeps them sharper for, for a much longer time. No, I've seen some of your activities. They're pretty good. Yeah. It isn't just bingo all day. No, no. Although we don't want to lessen the importance of bingo because I was, I was at a place, um, a friend of mine was in a rehab and they didn't want to go play bingo and they encouraged her to go. And I understood why. Because you visually, you have to know what you're doing. Right. You have to orally hear what's going on. You have to be able to move your fingers to put place things on. Some people even have three and four cards at a time. Yeah, I know it's good. <laughs> so I mean, even bingo has its merit. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, we have current, current events, I think three times a week. You know, they really, a lot of them really know what's going on. You could hear them, was it yesterday or maybe it was this morning talking about, you know, politics and the news and politics. <laughs> it's like, sure. They had some very strong opinions. Yes, they did. You know, it's funny you should mention that. Uh, I take my husband to have his, um, every five weeks he has to have a shot in the eye because he has macular degeneration. And so while we're sitting in the waiting room, this was a few years ago in the, um, before Barack Obama, I think, was elected. And <laughs> um, they had CNN on. And yeah. a lot of us were yelling at each other and all. You know, there's a new rule. You can only watch, they, they put the TV and it's set on uh, housing and things. Right. I <laughs> because everybody gets so excited. And that's good though for the older adults. It really is. You know, they keep up with, a lot of them keep up with more than you would think. With you the know? politics. Yeah, because they lived in those. They lived in there during that time. They know what's going on. Even as you said, short term memory may be not so important, but long term memory is there. Right. So it's, it's fascinating. But yeah, I think that anybody looking or even can even if you're not contemplating it, if you have older people in your life that are declining, you should at least check out some facilities to know. And a lot of times it really is after hospitalization and they realize they can't do this anymore. They can't be the 24-7 caregiver. 
even if they have an aide in the home, it's still, you know, it still requires a lot of, of the child or the spouse. Um, so you have to watch over things, even if you're, you know, have someone at home. You have to see that's the fallacy that if you're a person being cared for and you don't really have the power to think about things or remember things, the cog- cognitive daily, you know, uh, requirements, uh, and you bring in someone from the outside, you have to be, that's a pretty trustworthy kind of a thing. And you're never sure if that's all working. So here you're the child up north or somewhere yeah. else. And you have to rely on that person where when you're at an institutional setting, there are a lot of people watching over it and nothing's right. going to pass by them that isn't right. Right. Especially, you know, when they live there, there's a lot of people that know them. It's, you know, it's not the same as you're there for two weeks. You know, when they live there, I can pass people in the hallway and say, whoa, you know, she doesn't look that good. At which point I go to the nurse and say, she doesn't look that good. You know, so there are a lot of eyes on, on the people that live there just because you get to know them, you know, and you actually get pretty attached to a lot of them. So, you know, you don't want to see anything happen. Probably them. people are living longer there because they are there. You probably, when they came in, you thought, oh my goodness, that may, they may not last. And all of a sudden every year they're still there. They're still better. there and looking better. You know, it, it is amazing. Yeah, it's a whole new way to look at this. So are you prepared for the possibility of long-term care? Of course not. But you could get started. And I, what I say is a good thing to uh, go and volunteer. I know you love yeah, volunteers. I do. There's no better way to appreciate a place than to volunteer. That's right. Even if it's one day a month, one day a week, whatever. But you're absolutely right because you get to see the reality. And it's not, like you said, it's not the old days where people are just housed um, they're in bed and they're there all day till they they get up for their meals and they go back to bed. That's not yeah, what we do. No, and it's amazing how you know people that have been cared for at home and they finally place them. Here's the daughter. Don't make her get out of bed. No, she has to get out of bed. You know well, why, so why is that? Because no, no, they probably no. didn't have the resources to physically get these people out of bed at home, or it was too much work. Physically, and then the patient gets used to, I don't want to get out of bed. No, we want you to get out of bed. So sometimes that's a battle for the first couple of weeks. No, we want them out of bed, you know, and then you start to see them come back to life, so to speak. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. I had not heard that, but yeah. I can see why that would, because they don't want them to fall or whatever, but right. they, they were by themselves. So. Of course, they might say that, but the, being in bed, they get bed sores, they get right. oh, terrible things. They're, they're not moving. Their body starts to uh, deteriorate. It's very bad. Well, that's great. Well, we're talking about Regents Park of Boca Raton, and it's actually a family or owned and independently operated skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility. That's very important also. It is. It is because they're there um, at least once a week, you know, to check things out, see how things are going. And uh, you never know when they're going to pop in, so it's always good to be on your best behavior. Well, it would be anyway, but... Um, and your food is kosher. I have right. to mention that. And that means you don't have to be on kosher diets now, but I have to tell you, somehow kosher food seems better, and I, I guess that's because it's so clean and pure. Right. Is that why? It is good. You know, I'm people, people that don't eat kosher food will get like, I don't eat kosher. A chicken is a chicken. Oh, it isn't. But, oh, I mean, no. it's it's Closer better. It's better meat and chicken. Better, but you don't have to worry about it. It's going to taste funny because it doesn't. No, taste it funny. does. It tastes better. Yeah, it's it really good. does. It's amazing. My aunt used to make chicken soup, and I don't know why no one can make chicken soup like hers, but she used kosher chickens. See, I, I wouldn't have even thought of that. It's a good idea. Oh yeah, it just was different. Yeah, and so yeah, I remember that. Well, and then, of course, people who do want a kosher. Um, place there aren't that many and no there are very important. few this is a glad kosher um it's very good plus you know if a family member wants to bring something in for them that's not kosher we have the ability to manage that there's oh, you know oh i see yeah, i hadn't so even thought about that they can't eat it in the dining room because that's kosher but they can eat it in their room or out like today is a beautiful day they could have oh, lunch outside you know oh that's that's a good point I yeah i don't know enough about it so i'm glad you mentioned that too um, I think the other, the other situation is you should be 
very proud that you got the Caregiver 2014 Friendly Award. What did you have to do to get that? Well, there was a whole bunch of paperwork to fill out to show why we should get that, which we did. And there were three facilities in the nation that um, were awarded that, and we were one of them, the only one in Florida. So we were very proud. I would say so. That's spectacular. Is that because... Uh, how did they figure that out? Did they well, bring people in and they, you didn't no, know they were bringing them in no, to do it? No, not to my knowledge, but they do come in once in a while. Um, Gary Barg from Today's Caregiver, you know, comes in here and there. Um, but it was just a tremendous amount of paperwork to fill out and send, you know, proof that this is what we do. And um, and some poor person had to go through all this stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we won. I was very Oh, very proud of that. I have no idea, you know, what the other people put down, but I can see where everything they probably asked, you probably had a yes. Yeah, we 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 do a good job, you know. And like I say, it's long term care, which is totally different from short term rehab. But often, our short term rehab patients will convert to long term care. Um, again, if it's you know people that were trying to manage at home, they end up in the hospital. And then they realize maybe it's because they've had that three week break, how hard their life has become, or it's somebody that's had a tremendous um, catastrophic event like a, a severe stroke or, you know, respiratory issues that really it's, it's hard to manage a lot of that stuff by yourself at home. It really is. I was thinking about what you just said about a stroke. So someone has a stroke and they wind up, of course, they're in the hospital and then they wind up at Regents Park. And then there's a certain amount of time, and then they have to go home. Right. And going home when you've had a stroke, who's going to cook? Who's going to clean? Who's going to help you walk? Right. Unless you have, you know, a lot of money and you can really afford someone to really help you through it, even at the beginning, uh, it's a pretty tough deal. Well, and it, you know, I mean, there's so many issues with a stroke that, you know, they could have cognitive impairment, which a lot of them do visual impairments, um, incontinence. They, you know, they can't get up by themselves, although they not probably don't remember that they can't, so they're a major fall risk. I mean, there's so much involved um, that you really have to know what you're getting into, you know, to bring somebody home with all those issues. It's really tough. It really is, but the nice part is you don't have to say, okay, well, we can't do it, you can go to this barn and yeah. stay where the horses are. Right? Yeah. No, it's it's so much better. And another thing that really surprises people, obviously we'll take people that pay privately, which is expensive at any nursing facility, but we also do take Medicaid. People are so surprised. You take Medicaid? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. You know, it's because a, a lot point. of people will start to, will they'll come in and spend down, but that they will convert to long-term Medicaid. That is wonderful to hear. A lot of facilities didn't do that or don't do that or something. I know I've heard about that. Yeah. And there are limited beds. You know, I mean, we have, you don't have so many beds. Um, but we, we have a, about a hundred, we have 180 beds minus 710 long-term beds. And probably 70, 75% of those are long-term Medicaid. And the interesting thing, uh, and I, I know what the answer is, but I'm going to share it. No, you're not going to be treated any differently. No, not See, at all. that's the first thing someone would say. Yeah, I mean. Oh, if, she's a Medicaid person, right? Yeah, no. The nurses don't care who's paying the bill. Um, number one, probably don't even know. But the reality is if you're in bed A and, and your roommate's in bed B, you're not going to get any different treatment. It's exactly the same. Yeah, that's, that's really true. And you can see. You know, Leslie's been around a long time. She's loving. She's smart. She's she's makes sure that everybody is treated fairly. She has a very good staff, and that's another thing. And and they've all been she and a lot of the other uh, personnel have been friends for a long time. They've been together. They know what each thinks. They know what should happen. Right. And it's it's really a team there. And I, I they don't come and go. That was the other thing. A lot of places, someone's there one time. And then three months later, they're gone. Right. But that's not true with you. I know that uh, someone we just had on the show was there 17 years. I know that Jilda's been with you for a long time. I mean, a lot of you have been together. 
a long time. And that makes a difference, I think, don't you? Oh, yeah, because you you know what your what your expectations are of each other. You know what the job entails. You know what needs to be done. Who to go to for help if you need help, you know, with any particular thing. Um, it makes a big difference. And that's a sign of something not working well when you see people coming and going. Oh, yeah, yeah. One thing that I have heard is that the management gets involved in some of these places that don't do well the management's there looking over your shoulder every single day it's really tough right and i don't think that you get that from your management no we don't I mean, they, they've hired you they trust you and unless something weird happens you right know, that's what they expect you to do in which case the whole team gets together to find out what happened you know um and nothing is ever cut and dry you know when a situation arises it's always much more than somebody fell. Well, what happened? Did we have everything in place? Because you can't restrain people in, yeah. in the nursing facilities. So, you know, you put it, as many things in place as you can. Right. And I'll tell you, I've seen people with private duties. The private duty leaves for five minutes and boom, patients on the floor. That happened to my mother. And I don't even know if the woman left. She might, might think my mother was in the kitchen. She was on a chair and or on, I don't know what she was on. And the lady was with her all the time, and she must have turned around and done something. My mother fell. That's all it takes. Gift. That's all it takes. So, and you can't blame anybody for that. I mean, that's exactly what you said. The, the big thing, though, is that there is someone there to help them most of the time. And, you know, and, and sometimes accidents happen. But, you know, it, if you think about but, it. Excuse me, let me just finish. So now when it happens, there's someone right there. Right. To help, to get emergency, to, to be with them when they right. go to the hospital. That's the other part of it. And I know that you've told me that if someone gets hurt while they're at Regent's Park, somebody does go to the hospital and really watches over them. Right. You know, I mean, it is tough because I don't care why you're at Regent's Park, but if you've been independent the majority of your life and somebody tells you you can't get up by yourself, well, you've been doing it for 80, 90 years. Yeah, okay. And as soon as you walk out, they're going to try and get up, you know, if they can. You would. I would. You know, that's just human nature. So, yeah, things happen that I shouldn't say we don't anticipate because we do anticipate it. You know, that's why there's all kinds of chair alarms, bed alarms, you know, all kinds of things that we can put in place. Low beds, um, but you cannot restrain people to keep them secure. So... I've never asked you this question before. Do people come in owning cars and and keep the cars there and they don't drive them? Yeah. Not that often, but it's always interesting when, you know, they say, well, he's going to go out on pass and he's got his car here. I'm thinking, whoa, if he's well enough to drive his car, he's probably well enough to go home. You know, those are usually the short term rehab. No, no, but the long term. Do you have anybody? A lot of times. Well, I remember some of the retirement communities, the, uh, um, well, ones were independent. You yeah. Know. And the cars sit there and they're not used, but right. it's a, it just says, I'm still independent, right? Right. Exactly. Now we have a couple, um, wheelchair accessible vans and they belong to residents that are long term and they're there so that once a week or whenever somebody comes and takes them out, their van is oh, there. Oh, well, that's very nice. Yeah. Right. But, but you do take everybody where they have to go. So let's say that. They are in a wheelchair or even just, you know, not as able to go. You take them, you take them to the grocery store if they want to go. Yeah. We have um, a couple long-term residents that like to cook. So they will take them to the grocery store, let them pick out what they want, and then they stay with them in the activities room. There's a, a full kitchen, basically. And they somebody will stay with them while they cook whatever it is they want to cook. It's not, not every story, night. But though. It, yeah. It's just something that they get the knack to, I want to cook this tonight, right? And, right. And you and, all help them do that. And um, one of our long-termers made some Italian, he's Italian, and he called me over to him because he had put together a little bowl for me to take home. It was so sweet. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That is so, see, he's so proud of that. Yeah. Was it good? It was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> he may, maybe he ought to have one night a month that he makes the, yeah. that, that for everybody. Wow. Now, that was very nice. Yeah. So. See, but so you really are individualizing, even though it's an institutional setting, you individualize right. as much as you can. Absolutely. Because it's their home. You know, we just work there. It's their home. 
So you always have to look at it that way. You know, this is their home. I know when you have parties, a lot of the residents that come, it wasn't for the residents. This is really for out, outside right. people, right? And in. inevitably you see people who are there who are residents and they are so happy. They're not upset that their house is being, you know, um, monopolized by other people. Right. They are just happy that other people are there and that they can share their home with them. Right. I think so. And they, you know, they'll listen to the music and, you know, not that many sneak in, but, you know, a few. But you allow that. Yeah. What, what are you going to say? No, it's their, yeah, that's right. It's They're their not home. hurt anything. And I'm sure people who come there are very attentive to them and want to know who they are and yep. say hello to them. You, get, you really get involved with, with them, you know. It, it, they become, you know, a little bit of family, you know. Yeah, I'm sure that's great. Well, um, I'm going to ask another question in a minute, but let me give some more information about Regents Park, Boca Raton, family-owned and independently operated. It's a skilled nursing and rehabilitation facility. Here are some of the services. Customized rehabilitative care, clinical capabilities, quality nursing, resident and visitor amenities, social activities, quality food service, free mobile app, and it's the phone number is 561-483-9282. And it's been wonderful, and I'm not going to ask you the question now. I'll ask you another time. You're lucky. Okay. It's going to make you laugh. Okay, so thanks, Leslie Curtis, for being here with us, and we'll talk to you again. Okay, thank you so much.